Hey hey guys, Adam514 here to talk about afterburners and how they are modeled in War Thunder, with the resulting issues arising from that particular modeling strategy. To begin, I'll quickly explain how a typical turbojet works so that we're all on the same page. Our turbojet, such as on the ME262, generates thrust by first compressing the incoming air, increasing its pressure and temperature. Then, the compressed air flows to the combustion chamber where it is mixed with a fine mist of fuel and ignited increasing the temperature to around 1500 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt steel beams. Then, some of the energy from the flow is extracted by the turbine to turn the compressor, and the rest of the energy is converted into speed by the nozzle to generate thrust. Only a fraction of the oxygen in the combustion chamber is burned, because if all of the oxygen were burned, it would create a very high turbine entry temperature, which would quickly damage or destroy the turbine blades. The picture on the bottom right is the turbine blade that overheated. To control the temperature, fuel is the limiting factor in the combustion chamber, so there is excess oxygen in the flow. That's where the afterburner comes in. The afterburner is simply a pretty long pipe with fuel injectors and mixers, where extra fuel is injected to burn the remaining oxygen to increase the temperature to generate even more thrust at the nozzle. As such, the afterburner can be used at any throttle setting which War Thunder doesn't let you do. This is a minor issue though, let's move to the next issue. Let's investigate how engine damage affects the thrust. First, let's plot the thrust versus RPM graph for an engine without damage, at 100% throttle and on afterburner. On the graph on the right, you can see that the thrust increases gradually with the RPM, but when you turn on the afterburner, the thrust shoots up with only a very small change in RPM. This indicates that the usual thrust from the engine is linked to the RPM, which makes sense, but it also means that the afterburner thrust is directly linked to the RPM of the engine when it shouldn't be, as I said before. I'm all about being pragmatic if the end result is accurate, but this has unintended consequences when you combine that modeling choice to the damage modeling. Here, my trusty testing partner Shadow Waffles will be damaging my engine so that we can once again plot the thrust versus RPM graph when the engine is light orange. As you can see from the smoke billowing in the distance, getting to the testing ground was not easy. On the graph on the right, the orange curve is the damaged curve and you can see that the thrust increases, increases gradually with the RPM as it did without damage but this time there is no drastic thrust increase from the afterburner even though the afterburner is, is on. And you can see that the fuel flow also does not correspond to the fuel flow of an afterburning engine. That's because the way engine damage works in War Thunder is that it reduces the RPM of the engine, which then reduces the thrust. But since afterburners are directly linked to the RPM as we saw before, if you lose even a small fraction of RPM due to damage, you completely lose the afterburning ability which reduces your engine thrust by around 40% in the case of the F100, compared to around 10% loss on, the, on a typical turbojet or piston engine for the same damage. Since the afterburner is the portion of the engine that can sustain the most damage and still function, it should be one of the last things to be lost when the engine is damaged, and right now it is the first thing to be lost to damage. As useful extra knowledge, I did the same test with a yellow engine and it turns out that yellow damage does not affect engine performance. As you can see on the top left, the thrust still reaches 6000 kg as it did without damage with the same RPM. I have noticed that yellow engines do not affect engine performance at all, which is good to know. Thanks for watching! Please let me know in the comments what you think about my more technical videos. See you next week.